Hello, beta tester. Are we supposed to be able to jump over this? In the superhero action game Gotham Knights, you can only jump in the right context, next to certain walls that you can vault over, uh, near ledges that you can hoist yourself up on top of, or from one platform, usually with like a yellow marking, to another platform. The thing about that is that the game needs to recognize that you are in this context, something that it doesn't always do. <laughs> like many of the things in Gotham Knights, it just doesn't work all the time and in some situations it can lead to deaths soft locks and mainly wasted time because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't Shit. gotham knights was developed by lazy untalented hacks who couldn't be bothered to watch some youtube videos on how to craft a game in a more impressive and accessible engine than was available eight years ago to rocksteady but allow me to make something abundantly clear the tools are not the problem the developers are. Uh, like and subscribe, I'm going to try not to waste too much of your time here. You've probably heard me liken actors to paintbrushes before, in the hands of a talented director or artist. An objectively high quality work can be achieved, but with poor direction, lack of focus, skill, experience, doesn't matter how good them damn brushes are, quality content can be impossible to achieve. But unlike the boneheaded asswipes that didn't even test their game to see that it was chugging, I'm talking seconds into the experience, I recognize as a creator that it is more important to show, not tell. Intro. At times, the stutter length that I recorded at various moments reached hilarious heights, and I honestly refuse to believe that anyone responsible for publishing this game thought this was an acceptable, first time user experience. The publisher put out this game on launch day without a high priority that the player's first gameplay experience would be good. Abysmal performance, camera glitches, monotonous combat made even more mind numbing by a lack of variety in enemies. Slow clunky fights and what's supposed to be an action superhero game bugs, crashes, on-screen prompts that indicate that if you press this button, you'll do one thing, but when you press it, it does another. This product is the very definition of defective, a malfunctioning product sold by people fully aware of how rough it is. It's not just WB Montreal that doesn't deserve your money, it's Warner Brothers as well. And players are becoming pretty used to seeing minimum viable products shipped on hollow promises of patching in the experience that they paid for. And yet, panty-wearing men reach out to me implying I'm toxic regarding the trash that these people deliberately withhold. A leaker had to slip the FPS information before they begrudgingly admit to it, days before launch. But you know what? It's almost like when you charge $70 for your product, it will be judged accordingly. Falling through the map? I'm afraid I've seen that one before. Frozen characters, clipping through walls, frozen in place, enemies frozen, inputs not working, enemies not spawning, encounters not triggering at all. I will acquaint you with shame. I'm well versed in industry practices, but even if I were less discerning, it's so obvious that fun was not considered in making this experience as grindy as possible. Gotta increase retention of the players coming back somehow, so pad out that runtime with artificial garbage, hamster wheel, games as a service nonsense that betrays what Gotham Knights clearly was at some point in its development. In Warner Brothers games, you'll answer for it one way or another. Arkham Unreal Engine 3, Harley's Booty Jiggling, Gotham Unreal Engine 4, Players Falling Through the Floor, CW Writing, Mobile UI, Cheap Voice Acting, Ask Yourself Why, Empty Soulless, Dated Broken, Dialogue Worse Than Forspoken? 
delayed a year, a piece of crap Developers hiding the cap, another crash, a disconnect You didn't test the disrespect So sluggish, but next gen only, these defenders must be lonely Montreal bled talent fast, shove this game right up your ass I'm honest enough to admit when Gotham Knights has done something extremely well So I want to take time to congratulate any and everybody who worked on this For effortlessly succeeding in making a decade old game look far superior to this dog shit not just in terms of artistic design or attention to detail, creativity, but on a functional level, Gotham Knights is inferior and paradoxically asks more. So allow me to stress again, a product delayed a full year still struggles to maintain 20 FPS, costs more than a decade old game that objectively performs better than this next gen only trash. Next gen only, not because it is a next gen game, but because they couldn't get it to work on the previous versions. If I may illustrate my video's point with a question. How did WB Montreal fail so profoundly when they'd already made a game in the Arkham universe that, using this better studio's blueprint, was far better than this? The answer is time. This WB Montreal isn't what it was then, just as Rocksteady is a decade removed from the Rocksteady that produced what we love. A harsh truth that does not automatically spell doom for Killed the Justice League, but it's a shame that it took all of this for people to join me in isolating shills seeking handouts with hands up their asses cheerleading for the dog water that marks themselves as the paid sluts with opinions available to the highest bidder whether their noses are down in their bowls for some kibble or their mouth is open in their blowjob preparation they must accept their title as bitch we all have guilty pleasures but acting for an instant that products like this are comparable to products like this? I'm not the hero gaming deserves, but I'm the one it needs right now. And this spectacle surrounding these dumpster fires makes a more compelling and gritty Batman universe story than many of the audio logs and emails lazily thrown into this joke of a game. Marvel's Avengers did that. Audio logs? Oh boy, Destiny famously didn't have time to explain why it doesn't have time to explain. And here we are like, what, damn near a decade later and y'all are still at it, wow. You know, copying in all the wrong ways. The writing on the wall won't help illiterates who choose willful ignorance over education. My passion never came from a place of hatred. It burns out of respect, appreciation, and a firm recognition of where the bar has been set. Developers and shills failing to push the narrative that this is fine and worse comparable are in for the roasts of their life. I don't care how many pronouns in their bio they hope shield them because they're anxious and depressed like everybody else. She's such a fan favorite. People love this character that they kind of want to root for her. For us, we thought, well, that idea of Harley, that's been pretty well explored in a lot of places. So we thought, well, what happens if we take her the other way? Oh, I gotta be zany, I'm your manic pixie. Like, like she doesn't need to be the manic pixie anymore. She is kind of gotten to a point where she knows who she is. She has a very clear sense of what her identity is. These developers are in a fight with what works. If you believe at a glance that this dyed haired entity represents the majority of the audience that you're selling this game to, you deserve to lose money. When people think Harley Quinn and Mystique, they see the characters they know and love. Confident, sexy, flawed, unapologetic, human. The Saints Row developers that are infesting all of these studios think they know better and are desperate to trash what has come before them. David Haddad of Warner Brothers Games, this is the problem. If they made a quality product and slipped this crap in, none of us could care. But what they've done is lazily kick something out the door that is not worth the price, that they're trying to pass as the norm, and all of this nonsense on top is an indication of wasted time that could have been better spent. 
I'm disgusted by yet another cesspool of a studio that hides, filters, blocks, bans any attempt at truth because it might harm their daily attempt at tricking consumers. I don't condone anyone reaching out or trying to contact these hafariks. He looked like he been crying. The snot just like Talia broke up with him and he's just like <laughs> I don't care about the person. I care about the message. The message is this isn't enough. Never again. Avengers wasn't just broken, homie. Patches would break that game even further years after launch. Saints Row wasn't just broken, it was flawed from concept. Am I dramatic? Sure. But Embracer Group, and more importantly shareholders, should be made aware of the well that the money is being thrown into by working with these unprofessional, out of touch, and frankly untalented activists disguised as developers. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of pandering, but when pandering is exclusive to one group, you're leaving money on the table. You're lighting that money on fire. These ventures, and forgive the Ferengi in me, are unprofitable. In Saints Row Reboot, exiting a car can injure the player. That's how incompetent the development is. By the developer's own admission, driving and shooting are the two things that you do most in their game, and they both feel awful, just like fighting feels terrible in Gotham Knights. A chore instead of a game? Education instead of entertainment? Avengers' first two post-launch heroes were two archers, a girl with no charisma and worse designs than the comic book counterpart because devs and designers are triggered. So, to the proud homosexuals running the show at Crystal Dynamics, only the men can be shirtless. Great. You know, more power to them, I guess. Constantly nerfed superheroes. I'll say it again. Nerfed superheroes. They wanted to sell emotes, but only allowed for the use of one at a time. But of course, because these devs make games in a vacuum, they didn't look at Fortnite. They just threw in a wave or a thumbs up and called it a day. You can't make it up. Time and money would not save these cursed, directionless projects. Overwatch 2 wouldn't be better with time and money. Halo Infinite would not be better with time and money. They'd be more scummy and more inferior to older titles because they understand now that they can sell piece by piece what used to be given. You want to choose your character's color? No. You buy that now. Scoreboards nerfed. Medals, leaderboards hidden if not gone. Because the only special that needs to be available to people is the kind that they can purchase. I'm real enough to admit that if the quality were there, people would tolerate and consume. I play Fortnite, I play Genshin, but games like Avengers, Gotham Knights, they're Jurassic Park without the dinosaurs. They see Fortnite, Genshin, and Destiny, yet they can establish effective ways to monetize the most lucrative properties in the world. It's not complicated, <laughs> but stupidity of this caliber is worthy of praise because I couldn't write a story with characters this out of touch with not just reality but humanity. Like a power tripping female cop arresting a blind man over a walking stick? Boy, y'all gotta step. As we move forward, I'm commanding any listener with any hope for the future, comment what you'd like to see, comment what you don't wish to see. I'm afraid I can't be bullied away from showing people the unpolished, untested, unfinished, disgusting examples of the deceptive swindles from the dishonest snake oil salesmen that call themselves developers, secretly activists, hoping to make their weird fetishes a norm. I feel Rocksteady is in danger of making the same mistake. We're seeing exits of very big people in these studios, and I'm worried. Gotham Knights made the same mistake Avengers did. Being so bland, boring, and tedious an experience that without the property and its built-in fandom, it would never be worth anyone's time. It barely is now. Whether it's a combination of cringe writing from loser developers peddling exclusively their favorite woke cringe or incompetence so profound 
that gear breaks in your looter, the half-assed live service, shallow loot, almost MMO, kinda sorta wishy-washy attempt at wheel reinvention where you take things people love and distort it to show us, like what, some garbage that you think is cool, that you think is better, oh you could do better. No one told y'all to do this. But signaling and injecting all of this was more important than nailing down not clipping through the map, frame rate that doesn't dip into the teens. Doesn't it just sum you weirdo freaks up? You're so obsessed with underage characters and how they identify? Pretty Harley is triggering to some insecure dweeb at that studio, but final product is modern gaming incarnate. These friendless, cat-worshipping, middle-aged attempts at human beings seeking to poison our entertainment escapes with dated education, like whack lectures that work I don't know what to their parents. The irony of these Twitter dweebs encouraging people to touch grass is that it's obvious you don't have friends. The grit that soaks our lives, that influences our humor, our culture, is missing from these hollow cardboard cutout imitations. Modern games like Gotham Knights are dial up, but you're paying Elon Musk internet prices. Point and click adventures, slow action games, looter superhero games. And the reason that it sucks to say all of these things out loud is because any single one of them is never a deaf sentence, but when it's executed so poorly, all of it just contributes to how bad it is overall. Chase that higher number, you tell those players, but the enemies are scaling as well. Mm. Are you all so unbelievably out of touch? Lazy? Deadline came too fast? But there's always an excuse. It's not laziness. It's not deadline coming too fast. You know, I used to apologize because I'm sure there are some people that are doing their job. It's that one guy that gets added to the group that's not going to do the work that kind of pulls everything down. But I happen to think that this is a studio full of that one guy that's pulling everything down. And worse, somebody going, what if we put this gating in there? Yeah, that'll save the game, right?